morning, folks. Welcome to Burning But Cool. Bit of a different setting today. I'm in my house. I just woke up. It's 3 a.m. The alarm just went off. Oof, unforgiving one that one is. We're up early because we've got a very special trip on our hands today. Um, we're going to be taking a bit of a drive down to southern Alberta, specifically uh, Pincher Creek, which is about a five hour drive away from here. Um, there's a lesser goldfinch down there coming to somebody's bird feeder. Um, like a fifth or sixth provincial record and a, a really pretty bird. So gonna go down there, give it a look, look for some other stuff as well. Um, we'll see if we can find it. Honestly, it's it wouldn't be the first time. Sometimes you do these things, drive a long time to not see a bird, but um, this this bird has been around for a few weeks. It's been pretty reliable um, So we're gonna do a little bit of a, a rarity chase today um, it, Hopefully it'll be light by the time I get there obviously, but right now it's a bit dark um, I'm gonna be taking the drive down. Unfortunately, I'm driving. And I won't be able to get any nice footage on the road, but I'll, I'll appear in Pincher Creek is basically how this is gonna go before, before we switch scenes here, I want to remind you, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like as well if you're enjoying the content, the videos every week, going to try to keep posting every Monday. So keep your post notifications on with the little bell next to the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Thanks so much, folks. And now we're going to go to Pincher Creek. Three, two, one. All right, we've arrived. We are in Pincher Creek. The long drive is complete and it is now light out. We are here. And as you can see, bird feeders behind me. There is some stuff on there right now, mostly red poles, some chickadees, house sparrows coming to the feeders as well. And uh, we're waiting for the lesser goldfinch. We're gonna see if it shows up, enjoy some red poles. In the meantime, we can, you know, Look for some hoary red poles. If you don't know how to look for some hoary red poles, you can do so with a previous one at a time video. Check the playlist on my channel. So in the meantime, we are waiting for the lesser goldfinch and uh, let's see how it goes. If you've been watching one at a time for the last few weeks, you can see that we've got some common red poles and house sparrows here. But unfortunately, that's not what we're looking for. We're waiting for that lesser goldfinch to come out. And just like many observers before us who drove lots of miles to come see this bird, we did have to be a bit patient. But eventually, the lesser goldfinch would poke its little black head out from the trees and come visit the feeder. So how rare is a lesser goldfinch anyway? I mean, I obviously drove literally five hours just to see this one bird, effectively, and uh, a lot of other people have made quite the voyage for it as well. So clearly it's quite important, quite uh, something that people really care about, but let's take a look at the numbers here and see just how likely this was to happen. The easiest way to that question is to go over to our favorite tool, eBird, and just give a quick look at the Lesser Goldfinch's range map. If you haven't heard, eBird is a wonderful citizen science platform where anyone can submit observations of birds that they've seen anywhere across the world, and they can also view data that millions of others have submitted online. When you put all this together over years and years, you get quite a nice map that shows the relative distribution of various species in different parts of the world. When we apply this specifically to our bird of the day, the lesser goldfinch, we immediately see that rarity is relative. To explain what I mean by this, let's just make sure we all know how to read this map. Here, 
the purple squares mean areas where a bird has been observed, and darker purple means that they have been observed with a higher frequency, or in other words, more observations on average contain a lesser goldfinch. So these dark purple areas like in California, Arizona, and northern Mexico are areas where lesser goldfinches are very easy to see. In these places, they're common. Now in the eastern United States, you can see a few purple squares spread throughout, as you can in Alberta and Saskatchewan. And in these areas, a lesser goldfinch is a prized bird that makes people drive five hours. In this way, you can kind of see that the rarity of a bird is dependent on where the bird is seen. And maybe this is a topic for another time, but it can also depend on what time the bird is seen. Let's zoom in a little further using eBird once again to see just how rare this bird is in Alberta. When we look at the individual locations where the bird has been seen, you can literally count on your hand how many times this bird has been recorded in the province. Now, to be fair, not all of the historical records of Lesser Goldfinch have been uploaded to eBird, and in total, there is, I believe, eight individual records of Lesser Goldfinch ever in the province, including the one that I saw. In British Columbia, they're a bit more common, as you can see, especially in the southern Okanagan Valley. But for those who don't want to drive 10 hours to go to Kelowna, it's easier to drive five hours to go to Pincher Creek, Alberta. And in addition to being one of the rarest birds that I've ever seen in the province, it's also very cute. They do look a lot like an American goldfinch, which is something that we'll be seeing quite a bit of in a couple months here in Alberta. But they do have a bit more dark coloring on the head and back. This bird has sort of a greenish gray on its shoulders and head and then that little black cap. Uh, lesser goldfinches are also a bit smaller than American goldfinches, true to their name, and even smaller than red poles, as we observed when the red poles were feeding with the goldfinches together. Either way, a really fun bird to see, and very lucky to be able to get this one. Thanks everybody, as always, so much for watching, especially if you've made it this far. Hope you enjoyed the special rarity edition of Birding But Cool. I would say if you want to see more of these, leave a like, but I can't exactly just conjure up rare birds out of nowhere. So uh, if you want to see more of these, let's just hope another rare bird shows up. I will be hoping for the same thing. Um, in the meantime, folks, we will have a video of some sort coming out next week. I think I already know what it's going to be. So subscribe, turn on the notification bell, follow me on all social media so you can keep updated with everything coming out of the birding but cool world. And until next time, folks, thanks so much. Happy birding and see you soon.